to another edition of Conversations with the Leader. Today we are speaking to Abby Wakama, the founder and the publisher of IT News Africa, a web portal that has become the leading source of ICT and technology news on the continent. Um, Abby, to start with, we'd like to look at the importance of ICTs on the continent, considering you are playing a crucial role in giving information. How do you see the ICTs helping the development of the continent? Well, it has been well documented that uh, um, uh, ICT has a direct impact on uh, on GDP. Um, there have been a lot. There, there have been uh, stats from the likes of the Economist and uh, Deloitte um, uh, that show that uh, mobile penetration has a direct impact on development. So, um, mobile penetration on, in in uh, in Africa, uh, the penetration of broadband, for instance, in Africa, is still at a very low level. So um, we believe that you know by promoting um, the opportunities for investment in ICTs in Africa, we are actually um, playing a, a, a major role in the development of Africa uh, as a whole. Um, at this stage, I think ICTs are no longer viewed as um, luxuries. I'm talking about your gadgets as well as other devices that are, are being used for to empower through technologies. What role do you see governments in Africa playing to try and encourage young people the uptake of ICT, ICT as a way of getting out of their poverty or empowering themselves? Yes. You know, I, I'm one of those people who believe that uh, um, asking government to do everything uh, is not the way to go. Uh, we, uh, uh, as Africans of this continent, need to also wake up and get up and start using these things on our own. But obviously, government has a role to play. Um, the educational system, uh, um, uh, the government should in obviously invest more in the educational system and provide access to, to uh, basic things like internet and uh, get people to know how to use simple uh, uh, devices uh, uh, like uh, 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 social media and, and the rest of them. So a lot of people are, on this continent are not exposed to, to gadgets and devices, but they could actually get exposed to them at school level. So I think uh, that is where the government can play a role. Also, a few years ago, I remember when the Rwandan government uh, started a scheme to provide subsidized handsets to citizens. Mm -hmm. those, are, those are schemes that I believe African uh, uh, um, governments could, could get involved in, because they have a direct impact on the well-being of their citizens. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, moving ahead, I think you did mention the issue, use of uh, broadband, mm -hmm. and we have seen a proliferation of a number of cables that have landed in, on the continent. Yes. And um, I think this has prompted the, the pricing, basically what you're calling the, the price, price war. Yeah, yes. that's, that's taking place. Mm -hmm. What would be an ideal situation to make sure that uh, broadband services that the entire, um, at the end of the day get to the low end? Because at this stage, I think it's more in the towns and the cities. Yes. Yet this can be used in the rural areas. What would be the way forward to try to ensure that broadband penetration is increased to basically almost everyone? Well, the, the issue with broadband is uh, we've gotten to a point where broadband has now come uh, um, uh, inland. But it hasn't gotten to the landlocked areas. And apart from that, in the rural areas, you, um, uh, getting fiber into those areas. We, we've been talking about fiber to home and getting fiber to, to individuals for a long time. It's not gonna ha it's not gonna happen anytime soon. In rural areas the solution is going to be Wi Fi. That is my view. It's that simple. Um, and uh, um, uh, mobile uh, mobile networks have a, a role to play in this. Yes. So it's either via Wi Fi or three G. The mobile operators are already in uh, these areas. And it's and they're the ones that are going to be the the, the champions of mobile uh, of, of broadband penetration on the African continent, and I think um, um, once we begin to focus on on, uh, on Wi-Fi and uh, uh, um, wireless networks generally, um, we'll see a, a you know a, a great uptake in, in in the rural areas. Now moving to the issue of skills. Now skills um, it's been a big issue on the continent and. Um, that is a problem that's hampering development in a number of sectors. What kind of skills do you think are relevant right now on the continent when it comes to ICTs? 
that are lacking and what needs to be done to try and grow the, the, the skills base? The skills. Um, at the moment, I think we're still lacking enough uh, um, engineers, people that actually um, lay down infrastructure for, for, um, uh, for networks. That's an area that we, we, we have to tackle seriously because we find that a lot of expatriates are still um, doing that on the continent. I think, I think that's an area that needs to be sorted out. Again, um, we spoke about, um, about schools and education. Mm. How are, are teachers supposed to educate students about um, ICTs when they are not even aware of uh, the latest ICT trends and not, they haven't been trained in, uh, in ICT. So I think we need qualified teachers in ICT um, to train the next generation of, uh, of leaders in Africa. And um, maybe lastly, in terms of engaging the continent together to try and, because I think now these barriers, physical barriers, they don't really matter at this stage when you're trying to, to do business. What are your views? What kind of an ideal situation would work for the continent at this stage to try and the general development of the continent? Okay, with regards to, to African development in general, uh, I think um, um, our leaders need to, to recognize the part ICT uh, has to play in that, in that regard and uh, um, uh, bring down the regulatory barriers that, that, uh, that are currently stifling the growth of ICT. Um, you'd be surprised that something as simple as money, uh, as uh, uh, regulatory issues around money transfers on the continent, uh, a, ma a major barrier currently, because you find that uh, um, um, if you have uh, an op you want to set up an operation in another African country, you may have to transfer funds um, to your offices in uh, in, uh, in Nigeria or Kenya or wherever, and. Um, Sometimes it's uh, the, the the cost is just prohibitive. You also find that uh, uh, going from one country to the other, you have language language barriers quite all right, which we all have to deal with. We all have to learn to speak French, Portuguese, and Arabic, and English. But apart from that, you also have to understand the different regulatory regimes in these countries. What sort of documentation do you need to get there? The visa issues for, for people who want to invest in different African countries. And uh, uh, generally, regulation needs to be to be streamlined across the continent. And I think that is something that maybe a body like the uh, the AU or NEPAD uh, that's that's an area where where they could play a role to streamline regulation with regards to ICT and ICT investment in order to encourage investment in in broadband and mobile uh, mobile access. So I I, th I think that's that's uh, that's an area that should be tackled without delay.